Aleluya. Aleluya. Let's give God a big round of praise. Aleluya. 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 Lord, we thank you. Aleluya. We give you praise, our Father. You are a glorious God. You are faithful and true. We honor you. It's an honor to be sitting in your presence, oh God. We thank you that your word shall be powerful in my mouth as it is powerful in yours. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Hallelujah. You can take, uh, before you sit down, mom and dad can sit, but it's here now. We can remain standing. I want us to appreciate God for the gifts that they are to us. Hallelujah. 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 We love you so much. Amen. Hallelujah. We can all take our seats. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've never been scared like this. You know, being a Zulu girl, to come and stand where your father stands. Yabon, it's like sitting in his seat. It feels so uncomfortable. A thought of it. I, I, I. Amen. Yo, I just want to appreciate God. Ngawe Mano Baba, you are an amazing gift to us the body of Christ. Um, maybe I will see a pastor who has raised so many pastors like mom and dad has raised. Amen. Ngelingilang Kulunkulu will make a way that you guys um, get an opportunity to see us all. I am praying for that a day where all the generations, Zaga SCF, amen. The people that Uncle Uncle has used our father to groom from nothing today are having their own churches, amen. Today they are pastors, apostles, amen. They are doing great and mighty things. But above all, I appreciate Uma because if she didn't release dead for all these years, Mazalwan, you can't pretend for a day or for a month or for a year, but for years, releasing your husband, serving children, and serving God's purposes, Kubantuana Onga Bazi, Nogubazi. We appreciate you, Ma. We love you so much. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, I greet you all, Bazalwane. Oh, I'm excited. Very excited to be here. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, my husband, for a beautiful introduction. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I love this man, Bazalwane. You know, as we are talking about radiance, when I got married to him, I was radiant. He has made it a point that that radiance remain in me throughout these years, 20 years. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has never caused me to cry. He has never caused me to be covered by shame. Hallelujah. I see God in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, Pastor Lohane, topic here too. It talks about radiance. I love this favorite scripture. Eh. It, it has become my favorite scripture, one of my favorite scriptures as I ponder on it. Amen. Preparing to come here. Amen. Psalms uh, 34, verse 5. 
It says those who look to him for help. I'm reading from NLT. Will be radiant with joy. No shade of shame will darken their faces. Another translation says those who go to him for help are happy and are never disgraced. Amen. But I think, let me read again on this one. Those who look to him, oh, it's, it's, it's the same as this one. They, 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 there are other translations that says those who look to him are radiant. As they look unto him are radiant. Amen. Hallelujah. Their faces are never covered with shame. Amen. As a body of Christ, as believers, radiance is our inheritance. It is what Christ died for. Amen. Christ died for a radiant church. He wanted us to be radiant believers. Amen. We can never have a radiant church until we have radiant believers. Amen. So it will start with me, with you, deciding in your heart that you are going to pursue radiance. It was not a thing for this weekend. Amen. But it is who we are. Hallelujah. And God paid such a price for you to be a radiant believer. Amen. Hallelujah. At the cross, Jesus paid that price. All humanity was covered with shame because of sin that entered humanity in the Garden of Eden. Amen. Through the first Adam. Sin brings shame upon anyone. No one is proud to sin. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe in my heart that Adam and Eve were radiant because they would have times of sitting with God. They were sitting, they were living in God's presence. Hallelujah. God is the source of all radiance. Hallelujah. So there was no way Adam and Eve, when they resided in the presence of the Lord, would not be radiant. Amen. Until the enemy came. Hallelujah. And then sin tempered with their radiance. Amen. Hallelujah. But we thank God that God in his wisdom made a plan, hallelujah, to restore the radiance. I can even imagine them when God came in the garden of Eden that day when they had sinned. They were covered with shame. It used to be a joy to see God, to meet God. But on that day, for the first time, they were ashamed. They hid. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for his great mercies of bringing us back to our radiance. Amen. Hallelujah. So, when I read on this, um, okay, I was reading get this uh, scripture. But I was tempted to start on the verse above. Amen. Psalms 34. It says, I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Then it says, those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shade of shame will darken their faces. And the verse after says, in my desperation, I prayed. And the Lord, listen, he saved me from all my troubles. There is this thing in me that believes that, that radiance is somehow connected to prayer. 
Amen. Because when you read here, the first verse that I read, which is verse 4 of chapter 34, Psalms uh, 34 verse 4, which I prayed to the Lord and he answered me, right? He freed me from all my fears. Then he's concluding. This is a statement of somebody that has received answers from the Lord as he prayed. Hallelujah. So now he's making this declaration that as I have, amen, prayed and the Lord has answered me. As the Lord has freed me from all my fears, not some, but all my fears. Now I can say, now I can announce and say those who look for help upon the Lord will be radiant. Hallelujah. With joy. No shade of shame will darken their faces. No, let me qualify my statement. This I say because in my desperation, I prayed and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. Therefore, I am saying those who look upon the Lord, those who look upon God are radiant. Their faces shall never be covered with shame. Amen. Hallelujah. When you look in the Psalm uh, of David, especially in Psalms 51, we discover that it is possible to be saved and not enjoy the radiance that comes with your salvation. Amen. David cries to God because he had sinned. Amen. In Psalms 51, he's crying to the Lord. Uh, he, he had sinned and had lost the joy of his salvation. Hallelujah. Even today, sin is still one of the trusted gateways of Satan to steal radiance from the life of a believer. He did it with David. We are Kalu David, Psalms 51. Amen. Hallelujah. Would he restore the joy of my salvation? Hallelujah. Maybe you are saved, but you no longer feel the joy. You no longer experience the joy of your salvation. A sinful life gives the enemy a gateway to come and steal. Hallelujah. The radiance of your salvation, which is your joy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, um, I will try. Hey, Baba, I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher. I'm a Hey, it's cut. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want us uh, to look at the characteristics of a radiant believer. Amen. I will just make mention of these few. Amen. And then we will uh, visit some of them and then pray. Amen. Hallelujah. A radiant believer is a man and a woman of prayer. Hallelujah. He's a man and a woman of God's word. Hallelujah. He's a believer with a strong spirit. Amen. He's got the right attitude towards adversity and afflictions. This is a believer that maintains radiance. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not a seasonal thing. It's not, this is not happiness we're talking about. We're talking about our inheritance as children of God. Radiance. Whether we're going through a season of pain, whether we're going through a joyous season, we must remain radiant. And because that's what Jesus paid for. Amen. So a, a, a radiant believer is resilient. 
he reflects Christ. He's focused, not easily distracted by circumstances. They trust in the Lord. They are people of God's presence. They have faith in God, unshakable faith. They are not easily offended. Hallelujah. Because when you shift your focus and focus on offenses, it tempers with your radiance. When you shift your focus, hallelujah, and stop being a resilient believer, challenges will wear you down and tamper with your radiance. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's quickly try and see how far we can get. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's look at our point, uh, the, the first point of a believer that is a man or woman of prayer. Amen. Radiant believer, a, a radiant believer is a man or woman of prayer. He is a man or woman of the secret place. Amen. Jesus says, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. When we read Psalms 91, where we see the issue of the secret place introduced to us. Psalms 91 says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shade of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, this is a personal thing. It's not a group thing. It's not me and my friend. It's me as a believer. Amen. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save me from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. Amen. Hallelujah. When we are troubled, many people like to quote the scripture and even confess it. Amen. Kanti Usams 91 is not for every believer. Hallelujah. Read nicely verse 1. It is for he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High. Hallelujah. It is not for all of us, but it is for those who decide to become dwellers of the secret place. It's a personal decision. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Radiant believers are people of a consistent prayer life. To them, prayer is not a spare wheel. Amen. We all have cars, ne? When you, 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 you use your spare, you use only the spare wheel when you need it. Not always. In your time of desperation, you think, I was laughing the other time with my husband. We had a, a problem. We needed a spare wheel. He didn't know. I mean, I don't temper with those things. I know my space. Eh? So I was sitting in the car, and he was the one trying to solve the problem. Now he came to me and said, you know, love, I've never seen the spare wheel of this car. I don't know where they keep it. We searched and searched. I don't know until when, but we did find help. Thank God. Amen. So the spare wheel is not something that is always on your face. Hallelujah. It is only when you have a crisis, when you think of it, that, oh, I need to, you know, I need to get the spare wheel. I need, I need, you know, the, yes. All those things, you only need them when you have a crisis. For some of us, prayer is that. But today, Bazalwan, let us revisit our decisions. Let us revisit our lives. Amen. Prayer for radiant believers is not to be 
espero ele. Aleluia. Aleluia. They dwell in the secret place of the Most High. That's where they are found. That's where you, you when, whenever you need them, they are there. In season or out of season, they are people of the secret place. Hallelujah. Okay, we are Christians, ne? We are to be Christ-like. So let's look at Jesus. Amen. How was he when it comes to prayer? Amen. Jesus was a man of prayer. He set aside time to pray. He would pray with his disciples. He would pray with the few. And he would pray alone. Amen. So praying here, corporately, is a very good thing. But you need also to have people that you have surrounded, you know, people that are like Esther when he was facing danger. Hallelujah. Surround yourself with prayerful people that will stand in agreement with you. When we are cornered by situations, we don't call mom and dad. But we call our prayer partners to say, my sister, please agree with me. There is this and this. Then when we, we fail, we can then come to them and say, we've been praying for this. And the enemy is resisting. Please stand in agreement. We don't pray for people. We stand in agreement with them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. People of the secret place, they are found in prayer. Jesus was a man of the secret place. Hallelujah. As a result, he remained radiant. There is something in the life of Jesus that made his disciples to, to ask him, to plead with him, to say, Lord, teach us to pray. They had seen Jesus healing the sick. They had seen Jesus performing different miracles. But there was something different when they saw him pray. Hallelujah. It seems like in their hearts they concluded that the engine behind everything we see, what is different with our teacher, it is his prayer life. He's a man of prayer. Lord, teach us to pray. Hallelujah. Oh, Bazalwane, how is our prayer life? We are to radiate God's glory in our families. We are to radiate God's glory in our communities. But until we become men and women of prayer, we will not be able to radiate the glory that we ought to radiate. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus was a man of prayer in all his seasons. He would pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Luke 22, verse 42 uh, to 44, read thus. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A man of prayer. The Lord, our Savior, was facing death. Hallelujah. He was facing, he was in so much pain that he prayed and said, Lord, hallelujah. If you are willing, take this cup that is standing before me that I'm about to partake Hallelujah. But yet not my will. Yours be done. He went to get a man to pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hannah. 
never stop to go to Shiloh. Amen. What do we do when we are faced with trouble, when we are cornered, when we, we are in, 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 in intense pain? What do we do? The one we're following went to get a man in his secret place, in his altar. He prayed. And what I like before going to Hannah, the angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. Many of us are covered with shame. We are sad. We are disappointed at God. We feel like God abandoned us. God did not send help to us. Where was God? Where was he supposed to send you help? Where were you? Where were you? The angels were ready to attend to you. God was awaiting to find you in your place of prayer. God was awaiting to see you beholding raising your eyes and your focus unto him. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus was looking earnestly throughout his life and ministry on earth, looking unto God. We are to look unto him. Amen. And be found in our place of prayer. Okay, let's look at Hannah. Hannah had a need. Amen. She was barren. But Hannah never stopped to pray. She never, and it was even worse with Hannah. When they went to Shiloh, they were going to Shiloh to, to give thanks unto the Lord. She never threw ten charms and said, what am I going to Shiloh for? What is it to thank God for, for me? I can see my husband. I can see my sister is going there to give thanks to the Lord because the Lord has been good to them. They have children. Why am I even going there? But the Bible says year after year, Hannah went to the temple to offer thanksgiving prayers and to also offer unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Because she was a woman of prayer. And her face was continuously radiant, even with an, an unmet need. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Until God answered her prayer. Hallelujah. And gave her Samuel. Hallelujah. A place of prayer is a place of encouragement and strengthening as we saw in the life of Jesus. A place of praise, a place of power, a place of divine empowerment. Hallelujah. In the place of prayer, we can be able, that is why at times we confess these scriptures and nothing happens to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Where are you confessing this scripture standing from? Are you saying those powerful scriptures from your prayer closet? Or are you just saying them in the air? Amen. Hallelujah. What adds value? In our confessions, it is prayer. Jesus preached with great authority. Why? Because he was a man of prayer. Amen. Whatever he was saying to his disciples, the power. Because when we go to prayer, it is like I was thinking, it is like, you know, when you, if I have a care clear, ne? I want to boil water. I will need a black point. Amen. We all want water to boil. But are we putting the black in the source of power now? 
prayer is that plug point, amen, where we access God's power to deal with situations where we access God's authority. Hallelujah. Where we, we speak upon circumstances and we receive alignment. Amen. Hallelujah. A radiant believer is a man or woman of the word. Because you can never be a man of prayer or a woman of prayer until you are full of the word. What is it that you're praying about if you are empty of God's word? Amen. A prayer that is empty of God's word, it is just, you know, it, it is just a useless, I don't know, I'm sorry to say that, but for a... For, for lacking a better word, it is, it is an empty prayer. Okay, let me say that. It's an empty prayer. You will end up complaining, thinking you are praying. You will end up murmuring, thinking you are praying. Because you don't have the word within you. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night. Hallelujah. That you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then, if you do that, then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Bazalwan, it's time we reflect God's radiance. Amen. It's time we well represent the kingdom. It's time we well represent our father, Kuma family's way to. Amen. Hallelujah. That this house may be filled and be extended because they will run out after you, following you because of the radiance. Amen. That they see. Amen. But it will call for us to become women and men of God's word. Because success that we all want, amen, good success and prosperous way is only attained. Nice secret. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. Not just meditate, but see to it that you become the doer of the word. Amen. And then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. Hallelujah. Amen. When Jesus was faced by the enemy, Simozo asked, it is written. Hallelujah. Jesus was full of wisdom. He, he would have said many powerful things, but he went to straight to the word and said, it is written. Amen. Usatana will pull another, uh, uh, you know, punch, and the Lord will say, it is written. Another, the Lord will pull the word, it is written. Hallelujah. And he conquered. Amen. The exact thing that Adam and Eve failed to do in the Garden of Eden. To pull what God had said. Amen. Jesus came to restore. Our restoration happened there when Jesus conquered the enemy through the word of God. Hallelujah. If Jesus, our Savior, conquered through the word, who are we to run away from the word of God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time to go back to the word. Hallelujah. In our personal life. Amen. Radiant believers are full of the word. They meditate on it. The word of God has a final say in their lives. Hallelujah. It's not over for them until God says it's over. Amen. They take God at his word. Radiant believers are not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Hallelujah. The word of God says, if you abide in me and my word abide in you. Hallelujah. 
now we read, ne? let me go back. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. Psalms 34, our scripture needs. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. Another thing that brings radiance in the life of a believer is answered prayers. Amen. Hallelujah. Many have left uh, faith because they say God did not answer. But did they pray? Amen. Hallelujah. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, only then you shall ask anything and it shall be done for you. Asking and receiving is not for anyone, but it is for those. Hallelujah. Those man, eh? those, hallelujah, who abide in him and who allow his word to abide in them. Then those, hallelujah, then those can ask anything and God commits himself that I shall. When you call, I will answer. Hey, amen. It shall be done for you. Hallelujah. Why this, the radiant believer is having a, a radiant face every time? It is because he dwells in the secret place. He abides there. Amen. Whenever he calls, God shows up. Whenever he prays, God, an God answers. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Who is he who speaks? And it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it. Hallelujah. These kind of believers, they don't only cry over their mountains. Amen. But they speak the word of God upon their situations and upon their mountains. Amen. Hallelujah. If you are empty of God's word, what do you do to your mountains? Because mountains, you know, they, 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 they present themselves in all our lives. Amen. We all face some hindrances somewhere, somehow in life. Amen. When your mountains are standing before you, if you are empty of God's word, what do you say to your mountain? You have no option but to cry about it. And when you think now you are desperate, it, 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 it's, it's a spare wheel, you know, situation, you run to God. Because you're not even full of the word. You're telling God how big is your mountain. Hallelujah. Instead of telling your mountain how big your God is. Until you, uh, 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 instead of telling your mountain that you see what? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am the head and not the tail. You see, Satan, I am the head and not the tail. You will not have your way in this house. I am given by God authority to trample upon you. Let go of my children. Let go of my husband. Get out of this marriage. This is not your territory. God says in his word, what he has put together, no man shall put asunder. Speaking God's word. Amen. What do you say to your mountain? If you are without God's word. Radiant believers have a strong spirit. Proverbs 24 verse 10 says, If you faint on the day of adversity, your strength is small. Your strength is not made small by adversity. By a season of adversity reveals and exposes your strength. How do we get our strength? fortified in God's presence, in the secret place. Amen. A person with a, a strong spirit uh, is confident in God. He's established in God. He's unmovable. He's steady under pressure because he knows who he serves. Amen. Hallelujah. There is a man of God that touches my heart, Zachariah, the high priest. He had a strong spirit. Amen. 
he was serving in, in the temple in Jerusalem. They were without children together with his wife. Amen. Elizabeth. Amen. They were believing God for a child or for children. But this amazing man of God was able for years, year after year, to serve in his post, to serve God in the temple with an unmet need. Hallelujah. That can only happen when your spirit is fortified in the place of prayer. When your inner man is fortified by God's word. Hallelujah. Become a man and a woman of God's word. Zachariah continues to serve God in his post. He never left his serving post. Let God meet you whilst you're serving with a smile with radiance, even though you have an unmet need. Amen. Hallelujah. He remains our God. Hallelujah. Anna, the widow and the prophetess, Luke 2, verse 36 to 37, she was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years only. Oh, Bazalwane, only seven years. You know, trying to figure out. <laughs> and then this one, Oma, eh, Shiamasogi, should you mean? Oh, mean of na. Okay, all right. You're still adjusting. Ne? But then in that seven years, she lost her husband. Oh, Bazalwan. She became a widow, a young widow. Until she was 84. Hey. Anna served in God's temple. Having a need broken, lonely. Eh? Pella, let's not think uh, he was a superhuman. She was human like us. Amen. But she served God. She remained in the temple for all those years until she was 84. In the temple. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Why was Anna praying and fasting? Hallelujah. She left her comfort zone after becoming a widow after seven years to pray for the purposes of heaven. It was not even her need that drove him to prayer. But it was God's need. Hallelujah. It was God's plans and purposes that Anna, day and night, cried for in the temple throughout her life. Amen. Why? She was a woman of prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And she had radiance. You can't serve in God's temple with a, a, a shameful face, with sadness. Ne? Because in God's temple, go figure Yaban. Hallelujah. She served with a smile. She prayed earnestly, day and night, with great radiance. He gave thanks to God. And spoke about the child Jesus to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. That was when God had showed her the child Jesus. Because Unkulunkulu rewards those who diligently seek him. He, God could not allow 
honor to depart without seeing, without meeting the Savior she's been praying so earnestly for, for all these years. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is faithful. Hallelujah. Her strong spirit kept her in her position. Her strong spirit kept her in her God-ordained assignment for her life. It, it kept her glued in her purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. Until her day to depart. I believe in my heart she departed a very happy woman. Having seen God's faithfulness in the land of the living. That is why she couldn't keep her mouth shut. She was telling everyone that the Messiah, the Messiah, the one, I've been praying and believing God for the Messiah, the Messiah. I've seen, I've beheld him and I've beheld him. I touched him. Baby Jesus, the Messiah. Even today, Jews are still awaiting the Messiah. But Prophet Anna, Wambona, Wamtinda, because God is faithful. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Hallelujah. Amen. Uchop says to his wife, You speak. As a foolish woman speak, shall we accept good from God and not trouble? Who is saying those words? A man covered with pain. Amen. Because radiant believers, they serve God in all seasons. They become radiant before the Lord, not before men. But before the Lord, in all their seasons, the wife of Job thought Job was serving God because God had hatched him, because God had blessed him. But even when Job lost everything, including his children, he continued to keep a radiant face before the Lord. It was painful, yes. But he had this innate knowledge that we cannot only receive good from God. Even when we have not received good, he remains our God. That is why Simuza Atingiazi, Umshengi Wami, we appeal, my Redeemer, liveth. Hallelujah. He was announcing that even though I am covered with boils, even though I'm without children now, even though I've lost everything, but my Redeemer, the one who is my source and my sustainer, shall restore. Hallelujah. She refused to be covered by shame. She refused to be covered by pain. You know, he, she, she, he, he experienced pain on the inside, but his heart remained radiant before the Lord. He still called him, you are my redeemer. I know you, 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 you are alive and you are my redeemer. I don't know about my friends and all the accusations they're saying of me, but I, I know you are my redeemer. I may have lost my job, but you remain my redeemer. I may have lost my children, but you remain my redeemer. My marriage is lost, but you are my redeemer. Hallelujah. In the place of prayer, we are fortified. We are made strong. We are made resilient. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Baselwani. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is steadfast, because they trust in you. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord himself is our rock. He doesn't change. Whether he, have, he has given us, whether he has not given us, but he remains our rock. He remains our, our redeemer. 
Hallelujah. Steadfastness of mind during turmoil demonstrates our absolute trust in God. Hallelujah. God promises he will keep him, me. Okay, I see Sean again. He will keep me in perfect peace. If I have my mind steadfast, hallelujah, and trust him who is mighty to deliver. Our steadfastness, steadfastness, yes, displays our absolute trust in the living God. We don't panic. Even when God has not answered, we stay in the place of prayer. Utu Moses, you've been my home. I have nowhere else to go. You are my home. You are my dwelling place. Whether Ungenzelanga, you shall find me here. I am here because I love you. I don't, I don't come to you because I want provision. I come to you for you. I love you. Hallelujah. I behold you because I love you. Hallelujah. Whether or I shall behold you. Hallelujah. Those who look unto him are radiant. Their face shall never be covered with shame. Amen. I'm closing by the line and as is cut some yo babung shy sing yavala gwang and pela. Gwang and pela manje usazung kashangit, you will teach me. Amen. Joseph as we close, was tested painfully. Amen? Hallelujah. Being a born again believer doesn't exempt us from pain. Doesn't exempt us from afflictions. Actually, the Bible says many, many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord shall deliver him from them all. Many, there are many, many. So from now on, MCC, let's stop asking, why me, Lord? Ah, oh, it's me again. With this challenge, yesterday it was this one. Today is this one. Tonight, in the middle of the night, to receive a call, another one. Many are the afflictions of the Russians, but the Lord shall deliver him from them all. Many, there are many. Don't allow the enemy to lie and say it's because you have sinned before God. No, you haven't sinned. Tell him I didn't sin. Many are the afflictions of the Russians. I wasn't. Don't you know? Many are the afflictions of the Russians, but all I know, my God, my Father, my Redeemer shall deliver me from them all. Hallelujah. Joseph went through so much pain. Subjected to it by his brother. Brothers, amen. I like him when he introduces himself to them. Hey, Bazalwan. Hallelujah. In the secret place we are made. Hallelujah. It's a place of transformation. Hallelujah. At times God will expose us to fires of life. Amen. Afflictions allow us. He doesn't bring problems. The enemy brings problems, but God would allow us to go through. Hallelujah. Because he knows that he has told us in his word that all things works together for good for those who are called by him and who love him. When we go through trouble like Joseph, it is for us to say, it shall all. I don't know how, but it shall all work together for my good. I know my redeemer, he is not a son of man to lie nor, nor to repent. It shall work together for my good. Amen. Joseph says to his brother, I am your brother. Joseph, whom you sold. 
But do not therefore be grieved or angry at yourself because you sold me. Because God sent me here to preserve life. Can you say that to people who threw you in the pit? Who sold you? Because of them you grew up out of your father's care. The father that loved you so much. What will you say when you meet them after years? You are from jail. They don't even know all the pain they have subjected you to. Amen. But this man of God who was made in the place of prayer, who was beholding the face of God, says to them, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold. But do not therefore be grieved or angry at yourself because you sold me, because God sent me here. To preserve life. He forgave them. He kept focusing on God throughout his seasons of afflictions. And God made sure that his face was never covered by shame. But instead he made him a prime minister in the foreign land. Hallelujah. The cold stop crying of the things you lost. The cold that Joseph had lost. The cold of many colors. God had a plan to replace it. To restore it. No longer with a coat made by his father, but with a royal robe. Hallelujah. Promotion comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. Joseph was promoted. He looked unto God and he was never covered by shame. Instead, radiance became his portion. He says it was not you, but God sent me. Hey, Bazalwan. You may be saying, no, 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 no. no. You don't know what you're talking about. I am without a job because that woman, because of that man, because of that secretary. Come, let's read one scripture. Amen. There's a scripture that I like. Ah, sing Amen. City and God sent a man. Joseph, Psalms, hallelujah. Ah, my husband, find it. Now, nice, nice. Psalms 105, verse 17. Yes, yes, thank you, Holy Spirit. God sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. Pastor Luan, let's release the people who have caused us pain. Let us release them to God's capable hands, to God's justice, and focus on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. This scripture tells us that at times we look at people. They are being used. They are hate of you. God is using it. To benefit you. How was Joseph going to end or land in Egypt if his brothers didn't hate him? God's purpose for him was to be in the kingdom. Was be a, a, a prime minister in Egypt. How was He's going to learn the things to govern in Egypt if he didn't stay in the Potiphar's household. Because he was a favorable child to his father. God allowed the hate of his brothers to be a transport to his destiny. Shift your focus. Yes, you are inflicted pain by the people, by your family, by your friends, by whoever. Shift your focus. Shift your focus. Look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. That will steal, if you look at them, it will steal your, your radiance. But focus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith. Thank you, my Father.